Hey there everyone, this is Danielle playing some more Octopath Traveler. Last time we helped Harnet defeat the beast that was haunting the Whisperwoods, and we... and she joined our party and now we've made our way over to Atlaston, which where we will find Cyrus. Uh, on the way I did a little bit of grinding off camera, so Ophelia is now level 11 and Harnet is now level 9. Uh, that should help us out. Um, I also got some more skills. Sk sorry, some more, um... JP, with learning skills, so I can actually teach Harnet a new skill now. I'm doing it on camera because this is sort of a choice that involves, you know, this unique playthrough rather than just being grinding, which is the same for everyone. Uh, let me see. I think Arrowstorm would be good. Um, Hmm. Mercy Strike would also be good. Um, that's kind of like False Swipe. You can see, otherwise lethal attacks will instead leave the target with 1 HP. So, that's handy if you want to catch them, because Harnet is basically a Pokemon trainer. <laughs> um, hmm. I might go with Aerostorm first. Okay, that gets us a new support skill, which is good. Uh, let's just jump in and have a quick look. Heightened senses. Gain an increased chance of attacking first in battle. Sounds good. It's not the best support skill out there, but it's better than not having a support skill, so... Cool, cool, cool. Anyway, uh, the two of us are now gonna go find Cyrus. Um, I've been, it's been brought to my attention that there is a correct order to meet the eight characters in the game, and I'm not following that order. Um, it doesn't really matter, like, the order's not that important, it's just like, if you look on the soundtrack, the eight, like, the eight character tracks are in a certain order, and the eight tracks for the areas are in a certain order and all that, but it doesn't really affect the game that much if you get them in a different order, so it should be fine. See if you can figure out what the correct order is as we play. <laughs> I know some of my viewers will already know what the correct order is because they pointed it out to me, so... Thanks, cutie. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is Cyrus here. Uh, Cyrus is a scholar, and his skills will be of great value to us in our quest, so we will be talking to him now. Okie dokie. <laughs> hmm, yes. I think I know now who stole that tome. I don't know what his voice is supposed to be like at all. I'm just guessing. Perhaps I should go have a little chat with him, just to make sure we all understand one another. His name is Cyrus, and he is a scholar. This is Atlaston, nestled in the fertile plains of the Flatlands. It is home to the Royal Academy, where many a scholar studies night and day to bring the light of knowledge to the royal family and to all the realm. He passed his days in the halls of the Great Library, devouring tomes to his heart's content. So he passes. It is in that library where he learns of a grievous theft. Certain that one of his fellow scholars is the culprit, Cyrus sets out alone to confront the man. In his shadowy subterranean study, he will need wise allies on the path he has chosen. Chosen. <laughs> Take Cyrus along? Yes, we will. Hear the beginning of the tale? Yes, we will. Strap yourself in, guys and gals and non-binary pals. <laughs> Let's go. And so it was that Atlas Dam was founded some two centuries ago. Okay, so that's his voice. I probably can't do that, but there it is. Indeed, our fair city-state is among the longest standing on the continent of Austera. But there was another city-state with a history as long and proud as our own that came to a tragic ruin only eight short years ago. Oh no! Now, who can tell me its name? How about you, Therese? <laughs> I, um, I think it was... Oh no, anxious baby. Same. Now, now. No need to get all flustered. Oh, thank you, Cyrus. There's no shame in not knowing an answer, so long as you have a desire to learn. The answer is in your textbook. Go on now, look it up. Yes, Professor. 
Oh, I'm getting three houses vibes. <laughs> I believe it was Hornberg. That is correct. Hornberg was ruled over by a royal family said to be descended from priests of an ancient and long forgotten religion. On the other hand, our fair Atlas Dam was founded by one of the original clans that inhabited the Flatlands. Who can tell me how many clans lived in the Flatlands at the time? Your Highness? The histories have it that eight clans did live in the Flatlands in those days. Correct you are, Your Highness. It was a time of great strife here in the Flatlands, as the eight clans waged a long and bitter war. Why are there only two students in this lecture? This is very weird. Change would come when the armies of Grandport invaded these lands some two centuries ago. At the time, the rulers of Grandport sought to exert their influence over territories inland. Ironically, this compelled the warring tribes to put aside their differences and unite against their common foe. Oh, but look at the time. Uh, we'll pick up where we left off next time. Cyrus is pretty cute. I don't know if you've noticed. <laughs> don't forget to read chapters three and four before our next lecture. Yeah. He's acting like it's a full, full-blown university lecture hall with, you know, like 30 to 50 people in it. But there's two students. It's very weird. And be prepared to answer questions on any of the material within. Yes, Professor. Thank you for another most stimulating lecture, Professor Albright. Hello? Ah, Professor Albright. Mercedes from the Royal Library came by with a message for you. Mercedes or Mercedes? It's Mercedes in, in um, Fire Emblem Three Houses, so... <laughs> Seems today's your lucky day. You've been granted permission to enter the Special Archives. Splendid! Splendid! Finally I can begin my research. The library is just outside the palace. I'd best make haste. Okay, now we get to play as Cyrus for a little bit. Uh, just as with the previous stories, we could have skipped this part, but we're not going to, so that we can see everything that's going on. Get a full idea of everyone's stories. Oh, oh Teresa, you okay, baby? So anxious. Professor Albright. Professor Albright. <gasps> oh, thank heavens you're still here. I thought I had missed you. Your Highness. What can I do for you, Your Highness? The truth of the matter is... If you can spare the time, I had a question about something we learned today. But of course! But of course, Your Highness. It would be my pleasure to answer anything. Mm -hmm. After all, my role as your tutor is as important to me as any of my research. Unfortunately, I cannot spare much time. Is the question a quick one? Indeed. Yes, Professor. It will not take long. I was just wondering about the ancient religion of Hornberg. Pray tell, what did they worship? Very astute of you. A very astute question, your highness. 
However, I fear that nearly all the texts detailing the nature of the religion were burned and lost when Hornburg fell. I see. A shame that. The truth is... I do, however, have a theory of my own. I believe that the royal family of Hornburg were guardians of an ancient power. Mind you, this is not idle speculation. My theory is based on the fact that... Oh, oh Therese, baby. Oh, oh, sweetie. I love you. <laughs> Let us continue the discussion another time. My apologies for keeping you, Professor. With pleasure. No need for apologies, and it would be my pleasure, Your Highness. That such questions that such questions occur to you is the sign of a sharp and curious mind. I thank you. Your lectures on the history of the realm are most fascinating to me. For if I do not learn of our past, how can I hope to lead my people to a bright to a bright future? Indeed. A most admirable philosophy, Your Highness. The people of this land are truly fortunate to be led by one of such wisdom and kindness. Aww. As I am truly fortunate to have the opportunity to serve in some small way. <laughs> you are far too kind, Professor Albright. I am proud to be your student. Ah. Oh dear. I'm running late. Good day. Pray do not forget the assignment, Your Highness. Farewell. Uh, of course, Professor. Ah, oh, Therese. Oh, hello there, Therese. Yes. Do you have a question did you have, for me? Did, did you have a question for me as well? I... I mean, no... Good day, Professor. Oh... Hmm? She's just too scared to ask a simple question about the thing... I don't know what the question is. I haven't seen the scene before either. I've got no idea what she wanted to ask. Anyway, we're going to head down to the library now, which is over here. It's me, Cyrus. Good day, Mercedes. Cyrus Albright, here to browse the special archives. <laughs> oh, Professor Albright, you're looking so eager today. Mm-hmm. When I heard that an original copy of The Church of the Flame, a complete history, had been donated to our archives, I simply had to be the first to see it. I see. You're more on top of our collection than I am. Just sign here. With pleasure. Is something amiss? Actually... For someone known as the most brilliant mind in the Royal Academy... <laughs> when you talk about books, you're as giddy as a schoolboy. Cute. <laughs> when you put it that way, yes. Much as a child is fascinated by a new toy. I am titillated by the prospect of acquiring new knowledge. I see. Right. The expression on your face says it all. Anyway, everything seems to be in order. Enjoy your quest for knowledge, Professor. Many thanks. Many thanks, my dear. I most certainly will. How odd. The tome is nowhere to be found.
Did someone return it to the wrong shelf? Hmm. Not here either. An interesting These dynamic. archives are strictly guarded and curated. Where could it have gone? Professor Albright! Professor Albright, the headmaster would see you at once. Of all the times to... Oh well. Might I ask of you a favour? Hmm? What might that be? The truth is... The tome I mentioned before seems to have gone missing. Could you locate it for me? I see. Missing? Huh. I'll begin looking at once, Professor. Many thanks. Many thanks, my dear. Cyrus Albright, by your request, sir. Do enter. My apologies for summoning you on such short notice. How might I be of assistance, Headmaster? That treatise on arcane studies you published. What in the gods' names were you thinking? Sir? I do believe I made my hypothesis perfectly clear. <gasps> I'm not talking about your hypothesis. You went out of your way to cite one of the texts in our special archives. The knowledge housed in those tombs is the Royal Academy's greatest treasure. It is not to be divulged to the public at your whim. Laying it bare in one of your silly papers is out of the question. Oh no! I am fully aware of the value of those tones, Master. It is for that very reason I would share the knowledge with my peers. You are to share nothing! That wisdom is for the Academy and the Academy alone! Oh no, Headmaster Yvonne is terrible. But that goes against everything. Enough, Cyrus! Even my best argument is sure to fall on deaf ears. Who is that other character standing near the headmaster? The headmaster sees knowledge as a metal or precious stone. Something to be appreciated by its rightful owner alone. Knowledge is power, and power is to be hoarded. An unfortunate attitude. Indeed. My sincere apologies, Headmaster. It won't happen again. Is there anything else you need of me? That is all. You may go. Wait! There was one last thing. Sir? I heard the special archives will be closing early today. If you have research to do there, I would do so quickly. Good gods. It's as if you enjoy as much as you suffer. Thank you for your concern, Headmaster. In that case, I'll be on my way. Yeah, that, that other character had no lines. Enter. Didn't do anything. Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, Headmaster. What's the matter? Yes? What is it, Therese? Mm. <laughs> it's... It's about Professor Albright, sir. saying? I have no idea. Anyway, we're going back to the library again. Can I help you? Ah, oh, Professor Albright. A moment of your time. Did you have any luck finding the tome? 
My apologies. I'm afraid not. Say it is not so. Well, this is most unfortunate. One might conclude that it had been stolen. Actually... Professor, taking books out from these archives is strictly forbidden. Isn't this a library? Did, did Mercedes, do you know how a library works? <laughs> hmm. And as you know, the keys to the vault are entrusted to only a select few. Quite honestly, it would be easier to steal the crown off the king's head. A hole. An impregnable vault. A disappearing tome. It would seem we have quite the mystery on our hands. And the mysteries of the world are meant to be solved. Or so the scholar in me says. Would you not agree? Hmm. If it had been stolen, I would say it's a job for the city guard. But I can see you won't let it go until you've cracked the case, as it were. Indeed. <laughs> you could say that indeed, a habit I just can't seem to break. Cyrus is cute. Once a puzzle is placed before me, I simply cannot rest until I've worked out a solution. I see. Well, far be it from me to stand in your way. Must be tough being a genius. Leave it to me. <laughs> I'll not deny it. Worry not, the tome will be back on the shelf before you can bat an eyelash. Take care. Right, thanks. Best of luck in your search. Time to do some and the research. game is afoot. <laughs> That was a reference. Hmm. Now, where to begin my search? I suppose I should inquire with Mercedes as to where the keys to the library are stored. The guard at the front door would know who has been frequenting the library lately, as might my fellow scholars. Then mayhap I should pay the headmaster a visit as well. Path actions. Utilize each character's unique action to overcome any obstacle. Try pressing Y in front of a townsperson. Cyrus can scrutinize and glean new knowledge from the townspeople. So yeah, you can walk up to people and scrutinize them to find out information that they already know. Like this. Let's see now. Of course I got a key to the archives. No, I wasn't sleeping. I was resting my eyes is all. But even if I was sleeping, what would it matter? What kind of fool would bother stealing a worthless tome anyway? Most intriguing. You glean information. <laughs> he has a key, yes, yes, he knows little of the true value of the books he guards. Um, let's head into the library and ask Mercedes and see what she thinks. <laughs> let's see now. Only Headmaster Yvonne and the guard stationed outside should have a key to the library archives. Most intriguing. The information, librarian's testimony. Only the Headmaster and the guard possess keys to the special archives. That the Headmaster took the book, didn't he? Because he's obviously evil. <laughs> Let's see now. The key to the archives? Oh, well, I haven't got that. I'm not surprised someone stole a tome, considering what they're worth. I have gambling debts myself, so I understand the temptation. Most intriguing. He knows the value of tomes and is burdened with debt to boot. So the guard is not likely to have stolen the tomes because he thinks they're worthless? He's not correct, but... Then again, he could be lying. To make us think he thinks they're worthless. It's hardly possible. <laughs> Again, I haven't played this segment of the game before, so I'm discovering this as we all are, um, and it's fun. It's good times. Uh, I assume we want to talk to the headmaster, who is in this room here. There he is. Scrutinize. Let's see now. 
You know full well I have a key to the special archives, and that I would never be for so foolish as to let it fall into the wrong hands. In any event, I have had no reason to peruse those two tomes in quite some time. Most intriguing. He has a key, this is true, but the dust gathered upon it suggests he has not used it lately. Hmm. Splendid. That should be all the information I need to solve the case. He possesses keys to the archives. The headmaster and the guard. But of course! Of course, it all makes sense now. There are only two keys to the archives, one belonging to the headmaster and one to the guardsman. Uh, you have to be the guards, because the headmasters wasn't used, right? The headmaster's key is safely locked away in his office. Furthermore, he hasn't visited the archives today. On the other hand, the guard has been acting suspiciously of late, even sleeping while on active duty. Oh -ho. It would be all too easy a task to lift the key off his person. Yeah, the guard didn't steal it, but he, he would have not taken good care of the keys, yeah. So is it possible that the guard is our man? Uh, no. No. He would have no motive. The culprit must be someone who understands the true value of the tome. Is it Russell? Which is to say, one of my colleagues. And most likely, one who has accrued a frightful gambling debt. Which means that... Put it all together, and our villain is... I still think it's the Headmaster. I think Headmaster Yvonne took the other key so he wouldn't be suspected. Because his key is covered in dust, right? Right? Come on. Yes. Indubitably, that shifty scholar, Russell. I, I still think it's the other guy. Yes, I dare say my logic is foolproof. Shall we begin? Now all that remains is to find our man and make him confess to the crime. Word has it, word has it he's been doing his research underground these days. I think it's time I did some field work of my own. And so I have taken it upon myself to investigate this suspicious scholar. Interested in coming along, are you? It seems you have quite the curious streak yourself. But of course, mysteries exist only to be solved. After all, it is of utmost importance to remember that. Ah, but there I go again. Don't let me talk your ear off, but I will be glad for your help. Let's get right to business then. No doubt we'll find Russell in his laboratory down below. Cyrus joined the party. Okay, so that's the part we could have skipped if we'd wanted to. We have to make the subterranean study now. So I'm just gonna save here, and we'll do that in a separate video because that's the way we've been doing things so far. <laughs> um, we might want to just uh, double back this way if it'll let us, uh, and see if we can just grab a new, a new weapon for Cyrus. Uh, because the starting weapons everyone has are pretty awful. Uh, let's have a look. I'm not sure what Cyrus actually uses. Uh, staves, but lots of things. Uh, yeah, I'll get him a quartz rod, the same as Ophelia's using. There we go. Maybe some better armor as well. Yeah, I get in one of these round shields, there we go. Oh, by the way, the money is called leaves. So, um, you can make like a tree and get out of here if you want, it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, I think clipping a circlet would be a good idea as well. Cyrus is very focused on his spells, so giving him more spell ability is really, really helpful. Uh, yeah, I get in one of these as well. Okay, there we go. Uh, next time, we'll actually go down to the subterranean study uh, with our party of three. Uh, look forward to that, because we'll be doing that shortly. <laughs> and
and that's about it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And yeah, next time we'll be confronting Russell, or I'm guessing it's probably actually Headmaster Yvonne down there because honestly, Russell is not nearly as suspicious. He's just this one guy. <laughs> oh, that's just me though. Anyway, uh, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.